<clears throat> okay, um, uh, so today um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about um, uh, uh, landscape architect, not to say a gardener of genius, André Le Notre, it is his birthday, and a very interesting artist of our time, Anish Kapoor. But we'll start with André Le Notre, uh, and uh, let's read a little bit about him. So André Le Notre, uh, I'm not uh, reading the pronunciation. That's this is the pronunciation. André Le Notre, uh, born on the 12th of March, 1613. So that is 410 years ago. Um, was a French landscape architect and the principal gardener of King Louis Le Soleil, Louis the Fourteenth of France, the Sun King. He was the landscape architect who designed the gardens of the Palace of Versailles. His work represents the height of the French formal garden style or Jardin à la Française. Prior to working on Versailles, Le Notre collaborated with Louis Levaux and Charles Brun on the park of Vaux le Vicomte. His other works include the design of gardens and parks at Chantilly, Fontainebleau, saint cloud and uh, Saint-Germain. His contribution to planning was also significant. At the Tuileries in Paris, he extended the westward vista, which later became the avenue of the Champs-Élysées and comprised the Axe Historique. Uh, this was the man, not yet with a head, but you can, you can tell from his hands that he was uh, a, royal, a royal presence and a royal figure. He lived a long life. I think he died at 86 or so, or 87. He was a remarkable man. The truth is, I love André Le Notre. At Versailles, I love the gardens, but not the chateau, not the building or the buildings. I like the garden. The garden are superior to the buildings. Uh, here he is, uh, in, you know, at the, the Tuileries in Paris, uh, a, sta a statue with him. And um, André Le Notre, auteur de ce jardin. Da. Uh, list of principal gardens by Le Notre. You see, it's a, a prestigious list. Versailles, Vaux-le-Vicon, Château de Saint-Germain-en-Laye, uh, Château de Saint-Cloud, Palais de Tuileries, Château de Seau, Château de Fontainebleau, Château de Chantilly, Château de Bercy. Chateau de Chambonat, Chateau d'ici. Strange, this word, you know, demolished. But, well, the, the chateau was demolished, but not the gardens, I hope. Although, I'm sure gardens get destroyed as well. Vole Vicomte. Truly, his landscapes are, 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 are beautiful. You know, they are, they, are, they are visionary, without doubt. In my opinion, the gardens of, of uh, André Le Notre uh, exceed, uh, you know, the expectations one would have, you know, about a garden. Of course, they were built, they were made. I don't think you can easily say built. How could you build a garden? You, you can make a garden. But that they are, they actually... You know, uh, of course, they are for uh, special uh, characters, you know, king or, you know, uh, very high top level uh, people uh, in France who afforded such huge areas. But the, the vision of the garden is, uh, is, uh, is sublime. Uh, Versailles, I mean, look at the plan of Versailles and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the palace, the chateau the, is here, you know, these small things and practically the, the gardens take over all the, all the interest, you know, it's, it, it, this is my new school, you know, it's, it, it's almost not here. But, but the gardens and look at the, look at the modernity of the diagonals. I mean, it, graphically is, is, is formidable. And then it was, uh, uh, of course, it became, um, you know, uh, a physical place. Uh, uh, the, the, the famous gardens of Versailles. I went two or three times there and I never entered 
the you know the building. I I was always absorbed by the gardens. Sometimes maybe I should regret that I didn't enter the buildings. The last time I went, I went with some students from the University of Architecture here, and we we simply couldn't get in in front of in this space in front of the of the of the buildings. There were so many, you know, uh, tourists. Uh, you know how do you call them? The, 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 those huge vehicles transporting tourists from all over the world. This was, of course, before the the pandemic. It's a, it's a, one of the ultimate destinations. Uh, the McDonald uh, observed this very quickly with its um, astute uh, spirit, and there is a McDonald not far away from somewhere here in in the plan of uh, of Versailles, or maybe here even. So pathetic, you know, this McDonald. Why? What's why should uh, the French accept uh, McDonald here when they have an incredible cuisine, you know, to bring the vulgarity of that fast food in the proximity of Versailles? Anyway, the the gardens are. But we'll we'll come back to to the gardens of Versailles because there is much to say. Chantilly, it's another. But you see, it's like it's like Andre Le Nôtre wanted to take over the whole world. You know, it's like the infinite is uh, is uh, is the limit. Gardens of Chateau d'IC. It must be beautiful, actually, to 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 create designs for for gardens for uh, you know people who can afford such uh, huge spaces. Uh, some pictures that attracted my attention, of course, these are not by by uh, Andre Le Nôtre. But I like these uh, romantic uh, ruins, you know, where where nature, in the end, you know, climbs on the on the ruined buildings and asserts herself itself. Uh, all postcards are nice, as far as I can tell. This is from, uh, well, I don't know when the the picture was taken. Probably, you know. Before 1885, uh, when uh, 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 Mr. Benz in Germany created the first personal car, of course, the Mercedes Benz, 1885. Until 1885, there there were no, uh, uh, you know, private automobiles. And here we see just a carriage. Different times. Andre Le Nôtre, <clears throat> you know, you you can you can create uh, um, you know astonishing ornaments with uh, with plants as well. Uh, it is called <clears throat> his design is called uh, formal gardening, and it is formal because there is the will of the of the creator to use various geometries <clears throat> and. Uh, in opposition or in contrast with the British garden, which is very, you know, uh, informal in a way. It's kind of strange because you would expect the French who are also Latins and they are somewhere in between, um, you know, the Germans and the, the Italians to be more, uh, you know, temperamental or so. But, but in fact, in, in the art of gardening, uh, the French are very formal, not to say strict, and and uh, and, and and the British are uh, you know very very uh, uh, informal. Anyway, Andre Le Nôtre, as I said, and this is not that I say it; many people said it, uh, had genius, and he was the the ultimate gardener. No wonder uh, the Sun King Louis Le Soleil, uh, Louis the Fourteenth. You know, chose him to to design for him forever and ever and ever and ever. Anyway, gardens of Chateau de Chambona. I visited. I saw my myself just three gardens by Andre Le Nôtre: Versailles, Tuileries, and Fontainebleau. But I have to say that they, they, they are magnificent. 
you they are therapeutic. Walking through the through a garden by André Le Nôtre brings calm upon you, and you feel less alone because because it, it is it is a garden which uh, celebrates, I think, the meeting between the earth and the sky. Gardens of Chateau de Bercy. You know what? What's interesting about these gardens is that that their, their sheer size overwhelms the building. Even if the building is not so small, but it it almost disappears in the landscape, in the designed landscape. Usually, we do the garden after we do the building, right? We first do the the, the building as architects, and then then if we still have some energy and some creativity and a little bit of money, we work around the building a little bit on the garden. But here, it, it's almost like the building is an appendix to the garden. It's almost like a second thought. The building, not the garden. Gardens of Chateau de Chantilly. Look at this. This is cos a cosmic garden. This is made for extraterrestrials. You know, I imagine the, the unidentified flying objects, you know, approaching the earth and seeing these gardens, which seem to send a vertical message to them. They are formidable, but you can imagine, you know, what, what, what efforts and what costs for man maintaining this, you know, designed landscape. Because it's, it looks beautiful like this, but he, 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 this requires a lot of maintenance. Maybe more than a building. It's splendid. And, and, and contemplating these landscapes, these design landscapes, these cosmic gardens by André Le Nôtre, you have the feeling somehow that although they were designed by a man, by a human being, that somehow they proclaim the supremacy of nature over architecture, nature over man. The building is not to be ignored uh, itself, but uh, the gardens are... Uh, and, and, and they, are, they are sensitive, but they are also abstract. Gardens of Chateau de Fontainebleau. I was here, not for a long time, unfortunately. Now I regret I didn't spend more time. Uh, I was with uh, three students. We rented a car and we were moving towards Lyon to see uh, the architecture of Lyon and then uh, La Tourette by Le Corbusier and so on. But we only spent an hour or so in these gardens. Uh, they, they, they are sublime. The very, very large spaces. And yes, the kings of France loved Fontainebleau, and so do the tourists who go there. But the level of... of, of, uh, of uh, I don't know how to say it, you know, I mean, it is gardening, you know, it's the art of, of, of gardens. But these gardens are elevated, um, uh, you know, beyond what we usually think uh, when we think about a garden. You know, it's, it's an exterior that is in no way inferior to the, to the buildings they are, they are made around. And in a way, they are more pure and more... Um, um, maybe I'm not totally wrong in saying that they are cosmic, cosmic gardens. Gardens of Chateau de Seau. André Le Nôtre. Is this uh, aesthetical language uh, obsolete? I don't think so at all. You know, I look at this picture and I would say this is, uh, this is, this is, this could be even a modern design. A 
Look at these uh, manicure trees. You know, I mean, it's rather surprising that, uh, you know, Latin creators like the French are would, uh, would need this uh, geometrization of nature. I'm not sure this word exists, geometrization, but you understand. In my opinion, no effort should be um, dismissed in the quest for beauty. If we want to arrive at beauty, we shouldn't be stingy. We should allocate all the efforts, all the means that we have, all the energies we have. Is there a better purpose? I think Dostoevsky was right. Beauty will save the world. Gardens of Palais de Tuileries in Paris between Champs-Élysées and, and the Louvre. Um, in my opinion, this is less impressive than, uh, you know, those outside of Paris because it's an urban context and there are many distractions and it's, it's smaller. And, but still, still, uh, these gardens matter. Jardin de Tuileries, and you see there in the background the Louvre. But you also see countless people. So here is uh, André Le Notre at the um, uh, gardens at uh, Tuileries in Paris. Here we see the <clears throat> glass pyramid by I.M. Pei. And here you see the obelisk in Place de la Concorde. So uh, you know, the, the garden that uh, André Le Notre designed is here, not as uh, large, of course, as what we saw earlier. Gardens of Chateau de Saint-Cloud. It's rather strange because you think probably that, uh, you know, bushes or trees, if they are cut in this way, you know, following a strong geometry, they would uh, become uh, almost unacceptable. But in a strange way, perhaps, the French design, the formal design of gardens is not actually, I mean, you know, factually speaking, is, is, uh, is um, rigid. But because the, the matter with which it operates, meaning uh, you know, plant material, it's warm, it's not cold, it's not rigid. Taming nature. In a way, it's about that, taming nature. Gardens of Chateau de Saint-Germain-en-Laye. I mean, I think this man would have, loved, would have loved to cover the whole earth with his uh, cosmic gardens. André Le Notre. There is no asphalt here. It's all earth, you know, as it should be. Gardens of Vol of, of Vol Vicomte. Here is a famous uh, castle, uh, chateau, and a famous garden. 
very famous. Volo Vicont, André Le Nôtre. Really, I think these gardens are, 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 are made, were made to be seen from space by extraterrestrials or by Elon Musk and his friends on their way towards Mars. André Le Nôtre. Bravo to him. If everyone on this earth would have the chance to take a walk through such gardens, let's say once every week or better even a few times a, a, a week or better even once a day, Dr. Sigmund Freud probably would, would, would not be necessary any longer because it's very therapeutic, really. It, it brings serenity to your soul. It, be, it, it brings peace. But since we are not, uh, we are mere mortals, not gods, not uh, kings and queens, the chance of doing that is very, very small, if, if at all. Chateau de Vaux le Vicomte, Jardin du Chateau de Vaux, de Vaux le Vicomte. I wonder if Monsieur Putin reflects on such images. No, if he knows, if he's interested in, you know, beauty at all. And if he is, why does he weigh such a horrible war? I don't understand these politicians. And look at the section through the park, the longitudinal section. So you see, it's not flat, the land. I mean, there are sophistications here. I'm not an expert in gardens, far from it. But I would encourage anyone who has a liking for studying landscape design to further study the, you know, the complexities and the sophistications of André Le Nôtre's design. Because these, 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 uh, you know, these differences in, um, you know, in the, the, I mean, avoiding the the flatness of the of the terrain does have an effect on your perceptions in space. If you are there, I didn't visit this garden, but I imagine that uh, you know it's it's uh, what he did. Andre Le Nôtre did with with a reason. He didn't just uh, you know excavate earth and create these differences in the, uh, you know, the, the altitude of, 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 of various platforms that he worked with. There were intentions here. And, and that's why he's considered one of the, the greatest landscape designers ever, if not the best.
the gardens of Versailles. We already saw a plan, and now we'll see um, other images. I mean, you can spend easily a week or two or even a month just walking through the gardens of Versailles. Better still when uh, there are less tourists, but, you know, it's impossible to stop people going to Versailles if they are in France. It's impossible. It's one of the major attractions in France. I wonder what what the king felt, you know, since his uh, sight would have no frontier to hit, you know, it, it, it would just from his uh, castle, he would just look towards the infinite and probably his feeling that he was immortal was increased. The palace doesn't impress me, but the gardens do. Look at the magnificent trees. They probably accepted the surgeries of the clinician André Le Notre. You know, the, his interventions. It is an imago mundi in a way, what is here, you know, it's, it's, it's the image, it's an image of the world, the whole world, you have to explore it and reflect, and meditate and sit on a bench or, you know, just, just, um, just wonder about what it means to live on this earth. I wonder if uh, the king, uh, Louis Le Soleil, Louis the Sun King, ever thought that one day, you know, after he died, this great, great estate would be filled with tourists from all over the world. Again, the, the palace is here, it's just this. Well, here to the right is, is the city of, um, of Versailles. And from here to the left, the beginning of the gardens, which extend more to the left than this picture shows. As you can see. So this is the palace right here. And everything here is the garden, is the work of André Le Notre and countless people whose names we do not know, but they contributed to the majestic design and its implementation. Could, could one die because of too much beauty? Maybe. If you are not accustomed to so much beauty, you might. You might have, uh, you know, strong emotions and, uh, yes. Could one die because of too much happiness? Maybe. Anyway, I don't know. 
we don't know. But uh, yes, the, the gardens of Versailles are the gardens of Versailles. Personally, I would have liked these statues to be less white and less pristine. They probably cleaned them up just as they cleaned the facade of the, the western facade of Notre Dame de Paris, the famous cathedral, which became too white, in my opinion, and too clean. I prefer cathedrals to show the passage of time and, and, and the statues also. They are, they are too clean in my opinion. I'm sure people work on, on them to, to remain so. I think if they had the patina, they would have connected better with the trees, the vegetation, the plants. Anyway, this is my opinion. Like this, they look um, a little bit artificial, artificious. But they are not the works of André Le Nôtre. The Jardin de Versailles. De Versailles. Of the Versailles. I'm not sure, but the gardens of Versailles, Le Jardin de Versailles, probably the. Or probably the. <laughs> I'm beginning to forget the little French I used to know. Um, anyway, water, sculptures, statues, and people, tourists, 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 and the genius of André Le Nôtre, bringing everything together. It's quite a celebration, really, this, uh, this work. You see, I think they are better like this instead of white. There are even, even cruel uh, scenes. You are going to see uh, what I'm trying to talk about. Because there is cruelty in nature as well. Why does, uh, you know, the wolf kill the deer? Why does the big fish eat the small fish? As you can see here, the lion kills the other animal. There is conflict, there is pain, there is suffering, and then there is and then there is beauty, as if there is some kind of necessary relationship between the two somehow. I mean you see here, you know the the anguish the defeated animal and the and the and, and 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 the you know the the conqueror is the same in human affairs one falls and the other one triumphs and it seems this this story never ends i wonder what uh, andre le notre and his collaborators thought when they included such statues in the gardens of Versailles. Yes, there is cruelty in nature as well. Maybe these were included in order to um, make us aware that everything is, um, you know, ephemeral and that there is death. And
now uh, uh, photographic uh, journey uh, by this artist, Lori Victor K. I like her photographs taken at Versailles, so I included them here, trees of Versailles. Avenue of Trees, the most beautiful avenue, if we are to call it avenue. 